Will the Chiefs win as an underdog in Super Bowl 58? And what does it mean for the franchise going forward? Is this a dynasty if they do? I'm joined today for a bonus episode with Randy Mueller, former GM and Executive of the Year, coming up right now on Locked On Chiefs. From the land of the free and the home of the Chiefs, this is the Locked On Chiefs podcast. Where you're at Super Bowl week with these two teams, it's a heck of a matchup and two teams that have gotten there kind of in different paths. Right. It definitely is. And I found it interesting that a lot of the public said this is the Super Bowl that they didn't want to see. But I don't really know why, because I think they're really good teams. I think the matchups are genuine and obviously games at this level are about matchups. Um, I guess my dilemma is when the odds came out, I'm not sure the right team's favored. And so I struggle with the whole concept of the Chiefs being an underdog. And and I've tried to kind of work through things and issues that I had because of that. And I, I'm back to the, I think the Chiefs uh, have a really good chance. So we'll see, I guess, the crazier things have happened, you know? Well, I'm glad your reaction was the same as mine. It's one of those deals <laughs> that it's such a unique situation to be able to bookend this five-year run for them um, yeah. and have multiple contests against the same organization. And it has been what I think is really telling uh, an adaptation course of, of action from year to year to year to year. And that's, I think, right. the hardest part because it's not just Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes changing their their approach, right? It's everything that goes on behind the scenes in the wide yeah. receiver core, in the scouting department. From your 30,000-foot view, is there anything in the organization that doesn't get touched when some of these mechanical changes on the field happen? No, I'll be honest with you. I think every season is a one-off. And the only thing we can bank on now in the NFL is that there will be change. It's just a matter of how much. Even teams that have, you know, been constructed with a window of two or three years, so to speak, and everybody likes to use that, as an example of their window being open or their windows closed, everybody's window is always open until it's not. That's exactly the change that we have to endure. And I think it's a lot of credit to the GM, to the head coach, to the staff to kind of embrace the change um, and in certain ways try to minimize change for some of the things that, you know, have to have to go on to communicate, to play good on the field, to have productive Sundays. Uh, uh, so there's tools within the toolbox that you can kind of minimize. But for the most part, a lot of change, man. A lot of things, you know, position groups, like you said, coaching staffs now. Everything's in flux and everybody's kind of year to year, per se. And it, it makes it, I think, difficult to to really put a, a pinpoint on how you get back in yeah. Chiefs case, four out of five years. It's a different scenario every single year. And I think it starts from the top down. It has to be with Andy Reid. I would put Brett Veach in that category too. But yeah. when you look at the structure of this organization, do you think that there's more, are, are the feet under the water uh, moving this duck along? Or is it really just the two guys at the top disseminating information down through the organization? Oh, I think there's a lot of duck feet moving under the water. That's for sure. I think one of the best tools, and and I'm sure Brett has this as well, is is these decision makers have to be good listeners. I know Andy, so I know he's a good listener. You've got to take in the amount of information you can from all the sources. Um, yeah, you make the decision at at the end of the day, but to build consensus and to consider all the angles that come to making these decisions, you've got to be a good listener. So I know they've done that. Um, I love the way they've built this team because I think it's sustainable. Some of the philosophical decisions that they've made, if you compare it to the 49ers per se, in the way these team, two teams have been structured, um, I'm not sure the 49er model is. And I think the the, the truth is in where we are salary cap wise for the chiefs, where they are next year, it's all there for them to, to continue to put really good products on the field. So I like the structure and the way they've gone about making these sound decisions. You know, and I think around the NFL world, a lot of people are surprised to hear that. And I, I particularly agree with you, but it comes down to that, that gargantuan quarterback contract that everybody's scared of usually yep. versus yep. the rookie contract. And the way that they've navigated this to this point in being able to uh, recoup, uh, restructure almost on a yearly basis here at this point, is that the path of the future that more GMs need to look at in terms of what they need to do with their franchise quarterbacks when they're coming off of rookie contracts? Well, I think two things. One, you've got to get them done early so you can plan for it. But two, if you do have those triggering mechanisms within the deal, and, and they've become automatic in most cases now when you're talking about 40 million plus contracts. That sure helps. That's for sure. Now, it also helps to have 
that guy be Pat Mahomes or that guy be Josh Allen or, you know, these guys who are, there's really no doubt who they are, what they are. The value is there every year, no matter how much you redo them. It gets a little murky when you're talking about the seventh or eighth or ninth quarterback in the league and having his contract redone automatically. Then I think the decisions get harder. But these are no-brainer decisions in my mind for guys who are proven to the level that Pat Mahomes is. I think that's so unique in not just who Pat is, but how his relationship with Andy Reid is. I, I don't know that this could have happened anywhere else, honestly. Had the draft fallen a different way and he ended up with a different coach with a different GM is it is it one of a thousand here is it one of a couple of million chances that it worked out to be what it is now well I think it's doable and don't forget you've got to factor in Lee Steinberg Mahomes' agent as well because you've got a guy in Lee who's kind of been there done that he's not trying to reinvent the wheel he's not looking to really build a reputation off of one deal and have his client suffer for the sake of the next client and the next client so his his hay is in the barn you know, he he has proven to be a, a really good negotiator, but also I think he has in mind that this is the best spot for Pat. So they've got that figured out. They've got a long-term goal and vision. Um, but yeah, it helps that personalities here, they're involved in all this match. The fact that Andy is who he is, his personality is what it is. And, and let's don't lose sight of the fact that he is a father figure that is a really good teacher. And those part, those part and parcel are a big chunk of the reason now, obviously Pat's talented, but for Andy to, to, to kind of act in the way he does every day, you know, exactly what you're getting. His decision-making is sound. And, and I don't know Brett Veach as well, but it seems to me like he's kind of part of the Andy Reed family per se. And so he's not going to saddle up to somebody who thinks totally different than him. So I think it's a great matchup. They've taken it this far, but I don't think they've finished yet. And I don't see any reason this can't be a dynasty that lasts for a window of eight or 10 years total. 